Well, there it is, the world. And right there in the middle of it is England, tiny little country with a big idea to take over everywhere else and become really, really powerful. So, in 1583, a Tudor chap called Humphrey Gilbert lands over here in a newfound land called Newfoundland. He claims it for England, and so the empire begins. Ta da! Sadly, he doesn't leave anyone there to look after it, and then he dies on the way home. So, all in all, it's not a brilliant trip. But England tries again. In Stuart times, back across the Atlantic they go, and this time they claim Canada and the Caribbean, and most importantly, the east coast of America, which means we finally have a British Empire, and everything's going awfully, awfully well. But not for long. The American states declare independence. Not only do they declare it, they fight for it, and they win! Oh! is a disaster. So, Britain has to go and try its luck somewhere else. Fortunately, Captain Cook discovers Australia. So Britain says, we'll have that, and also decides they would also like a bit of Asia. Over here, yes, you see, there's a British business in Asia called the East India Company, which trades in things like tea and biscuits. Mmm, yummy, because everyone loves teas and biscuits, right? In fact, everyone loves it so much, the company becomes big and powerful and starts to take over entire countries. Plus, Britain wins the Napoleonic Wars against the French Empire, and they nab more countries off of them. But wait a minute, it seems the Indian people don't like being ruled by a tea company, and who can blame them? They decide to rebel. The British army, however, crushes the rebellion, and Queen Victoria takes over the country as Indian Empress, which don't impress the Indians. Ha <laughs> ha! Meanwhile, over here, it seems that the Dutch won't share South Africa. Naughty, naughty. So Britain has a couple of wars down there, the Boer Wars, and gobbles up a few more countries along the way. In fact, by the time World War I breaks out, a third of all Africans are ruled by the British. And what's Britain's prize for winning the war? A load more countries! Of course, I mean, just look at it all. A third of the planet run by one tiny island. Ah. But not for long. First to go are Australia and Canada and Egypt. And they demand to be recognised as equal countries, so they're out of the empire. And then the World War II happens. Britain wins, but we're completely broke. Boo! And you can't run an empire without money, especially when the people don't want you there in the first place. So India leaves, and everywhere else isn't far behind. 1948, an island goes, see ya, island. And then it's Sudan, bye Sudan. And then it's Cyprus and South Africa and Zanzibar and Malta, then Singapore, then Fiji, then Hong Kong, then the screen goes dead, and then the cat's put out, then the phone's unplugged, the lights go off, the milk gets cancelled, the gas is disconnected, and I have to hand back to Sam.